some movies are fun not because they're comedy movies, but because it's a lot of history and a lot of feeling in it. Airport 75, what a box office success this was. It made $100 million over its cost. Cost $3 million to make, made $103 million. Now, a cast of thousands and boys, oh boys, oh boys. What a what a what a great uh, movie! Charlton Heston, Gloria Swanson, uh, uh, like I said, a cast that uh, <coughs> inspired the Airplane a few years later. Now, Airport seventy five, also known as Airport seventy five, not nineteen seventy five, but seventy five, came out in nineteen seventy four in um, what, October eighteenth. Very strange title. Now. Excuse me. It was directed by Jack Smite and is the first sequel to successful 70 film Airport. It was produced by William Fry, executive produced by Jennings Lang, and written by Don Inglis. The film again stars Charlton Heston, Karen Black, George Kennedy, and Gloria Swanson as a fictionalized version of herself in her final film role. The plot concerns the dramatic events aboard an airport Boeing 747 when a, when a small aircraft crashes into the cockpit, causing the fatalities of the senior crew and the blinding of the pilot, leaving no one on board qualified to take controls. It was the seventh highest grossing movie of 74 and 75 at the U.S. and Canadian box office. Now, in this one, Columbia Airlines Flight 409 is a Boeing 747-100 on a red eye from Washington, Dulles to L.A., where Scott Freeman is a businessman flying his private Beechcraft Baird to a sales meeting <coughs> in Boise, Idaho. However, and a call a occluded front has the entire West Coast of you know, the United States socked in, with Columbia 409 and Freeman's Beechcraft both diverted to Salt Lake City International. Salt Lake Air Traffic Control assigns Columbia 409 to land ahead of Freeman's Beechcraft. As Columbia 409 is about to start its descent, First Officer Eunice unlocks himself from his seat to check out a vibration. Just then, Freeman suffers a heart attack and uncontrollably ascends into the approach of Columbia 409. The Beechcraft slams into Columbia 409, just above the co-pilot seat, ripping a hole through which Urius is ejected from the jet while killing the flight engineer and sending debris that blinds the jet's pilot, Captain Stacy. Stacy is about to uh, able to engage the autopilot, and the altitude holds switch before losing consciousness. Nancy Pryor, the first stewardess, rushes to the flight uh, deck. Now Nancy informs the Salt Lake Control Tower of the status of the cockpit crew. Now, at this point, there's no one to fly the plane, but she also gives an assessment of the damage. Now, Joe Petroni, Columbia's Vice President of Operations, is appraised a Columbia 409 situation. He seeks the advice of Captain Al Murdoch, Columbia's Chief Flight Instructor, who also happens to be Nancy's boyfriend, Dole the relationship was on the rocks at that time. Petroni and Murdoch take the airline's executive jet to Salt Lake. En route, they communicate with Nancy learning that the autopilot is keeping the aircraft in level flight, <coughs> but it's inoperable to turns. The jet is heading into the mountains of the Wasatch Range, so Murdoch starts to guide Nancy by radio on how to perform the turn when radio communications are interrupted and a Salt Lake Tower is unable to restore contact. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, unable to turn, leaking fuel and dodging the mountain peaks, an air-to-air -air rescue attempt is undertaken from a HH-53 helicopter flown by the U.S. Air Force Aerospace Rescue and Recovery Service. While a replacement pilot is preparing to be extended on a tether from the helicopter to Columbia 409, Stacy is able to give a cryptic clue regarding the decrease in airspeed during the climb and altitude. Nancy realizes that she must accelerate to be able to climb over the mountains and successfully does so. After Columbia 409 has leveled off, the replacement pilot is released towards a stricken airliner. A very harrowing scene, well done for the special effects. Now, just as Nancy's helping him in, the release cord from the harness becomes caught in the jagged metal surrounding the hall hole in the cockpit. Before he can climb in, his harness is released from the tether, and he falls from the aircraft without a parachute. The only other person on the helicopter who can lead the uh, land is 47 from 47. Seven is Murdoch. He is tethered to the helicopter, lowered to the jet, and successfully enters it through the hole in the cockpit. So at this point in the movie, we got high tension going back to the cockpit, to the people there, and you know the the, the various uh, glorious Watson and uh, the, the the group of uh, drinkers together, which have I think Sid Caesar um, and. Uh, 
a whole bunch of uh, character actors like Ben Ben Stiller's father. Now, the uh, the, the Justice Nancy is helping him in. The release cord again from the harness uh, breaks free, and the uh, the pilot flies off. Uh, now, when Murdoch gets in, <coughs> he's also tethered uh, to the helicopter, and but successfully enters it through the hole in the cockpit. He then lands the plane safely at Salt Lake, but is forced to make uh, high speed taxi maneuvers as a drop and brake pressure hampers his efforts to stop. Once the plane stops, the flight attendants successfully conduct a major evacuation of the passengers via the evacuation of the slides as Nancy and Murdoch reconcile. What a cast on this, and like I said, uh, like the love boat with all the different stuff. And of course, as the famous Helen Reddy as the nun singing to Linda Blair, which is parodied in an airplane. Get this, the cast. Charles Nesson, Karen Black, George Kennedy, Efren Zimblis Jr., Susan Clark, Helen Reddy, Linda Blair, Dean Andrews, Roy Tynes, Sid Caesar, Myrna Loy, Ed Nelson, Nancy Olson, Larry Storch, Martha Scott, Jerry Stiller, again, Norman felt like the drinkers, Conrad Janis as well, Beverly Garland, Linda Harrison, uh, Guy Stockwell, Gloria Swanson, and of course, Julio, played by Eric Estrada. Now, in addition, uh, NFL player and future Super Bowl winning quarterback Jim Plunkett has an uncredited cameo as himself. Now, Airport 75 used a Boeing 747-123. The aircraft was leased to transmit the Mediterranean uh, Airways briefly in 76 before returning and being converted into American Friday variant. In 84, the aircraft was sold to UPS, where it continued to serve as a freighter for over 20 years before being retired to desert storage in 2005, then scrapped in 2011. A uh, very durable plane. The film was shot on location in Salt Lake City International. Aerial shots over Herbert City, Utah, and the, Was- the Wasak Mountains are included. Now, as Sister Root, Helen Reddy performs a solo acoustic version of her song Best Friend, originally on her 71 debut album, I Don't Know How to Love Him, to an ailing Linda Blair. The song was written by Reddy and Ray Burton, who also co wrote the hit single, hit single, I Am Woman. Now, Airport 75 was a massive commercial success. In his first week of release from 144 theaters, get this, $2.73 million. With a budget of $3 million, it made its money back uh, in the first week. The film grows a grand total of 47.3 in the States and Canada at the box office and it was the seventh highest grossing film of 74 and the year's third highest grossing disaster film behind the towering Inferno and Earthquake. The film grows $55.7 million internationally on numerous re-releases, for a while, worldwide total of 103. Now, critical reception, of course, this is an unreviewable movie because it's just a piece of cheese. Uh, reception was mainly unfavorable, with the Polly and Kale calling the picture cut rate swell, which that's why I think of it, Polly and Kale. Terrible reviewer. Now, it was produced on a TV movie budget by Mercenary Businessmen. Kale also thought the audio program problems gave Karen Black's voice a metallic sound that was grating and that the main character is stewardess was consciously being patronized by men. Roger Ebert was less uh, condemnatory, awarding two and a half stars out of four, and described it as corny escapism, which it was. Although he made a similar observation about Black's character, that she is made to seem incompetent simply because <coughs> she is a woman. She's just a friggin' stewardess, like a male stewardess. How, what do you expect? She's a stewardess. Male or female, they're not supposed to fly a plane. Now, Gene Siskel all gave the film two and a half stars out of four, Calling collision scene both a surprise and well executed. It was well done. But the scenes afterward were both implausible and dull. Vincent Canby, the New York Times, called the film silly and suffering from a total lack of awareness how all comic it is when it's attempting to be more serious. Kevin Thomas of the LA Times wrote uh, Whatever Its Flaws, Airport the 75 generated plenty of suspense and was lost to fun. Uh, it's too much a rehash to see anything but the movie that it is. Now, uh, Airport 75 was including the book The 50 Worst Films of All Time, published in 78, and the American Film Institute nominated the film for 100 uh, Great Thrills over the last 100 years. Now, get this. This is one of many of a class of disaster film that became a popular craze in the 70s. Its plot, devices, and characterizations were many. Like I said before, it had uh, drunks, a singing... <laughs> Singing Nun, uh, a former glamorous star by Gloria Swanson, a, the alcoholic Myrna Loy, a child in need of an organ transplant, a chatterbox, and 
These were uh, parodied very heavily in 1980s Airplane and, of course, on the infamous Disaster 75 on the Carol Burnett Show. Now, in the Golden Globe Awards, uh, Helen Reddy got a nominated for the most promising newcomer, despite the fact she wasn't new at all. Now, again, just to recap, cinematography, Philip A. Latrop, edited by J. Terry Williams, music by, again by the John, uh, great John uh, Kakavas, Color Process Technicolor, release October 1874, 106 minutes. Now, I know in the TV release, there's some additional minutes because I've seen it. Now, I've seen this movie more than I've seen 77 and 79, and I like this movie more than I kind of let on. Because if you're looking at a disaster movie, really, there's a very simple plot here. This is not a big earthquake. This is not an upside-down boat. It's like planes have crashed in planes before. But what's interesting, the way they set it up, it was a tribute to the skill of the stewardess and the pilots and the crew to, to work on, on stuff. And uh, don't forget this time, air airplane things were like there was a hijacking, there was bombings, there was, you know, uh, planes were getting you know, uh, blown up and stuff like that. It was a weird time. So it was almost telling people, you know, it's it's safe to fly. But I would imagine a lot of airlines showed this movie because it was a popular movie. I don't know. Anybody in my family didn't see it. Every time it would come on, <coughs> whether it was what I called a 1 a.m. Uh, CTV movie on Friday or Saturday or a good afternoon movie, and it would very rarely cut. It wasn't a bloody movie. There was no nudity. But it come across like, if you combine the love boat in in, a, in a Colombo and a little bit of uh, oh what was that show, LA International, if somebody out there can remember that, I think it was in four and one, back with NBC Universal, that's what it felt like. But Charlton Heston, you know, he wasn't scared to do big movies. Look at all the big hits Charlton Heston had in the seventies. Holy frig, man! When was he not working? He was an earthquake, right? He was an uh, he was solely green and. Uh, you know, that uh, I Am Legend uh, knockoff, uh, you know, uh, the Planet of the Apes movies, two of those. Everything he touched turned to gold back then. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm giving my review on this. It's an unreviewable movie. I'm not going to give it five stars, but if you want a piece of cheese, you know, like you get a, like, markdown cheese that hasn't turned yet, that's what Airport 75 is. And you can say, oh, that's Sid Caesar, that's Gloria Swanson, there's Myrna Lloyd, that's, ooh, Eric Estrada chasing a woman again. So... But, I mean, it's a very enjoyable movie, and it's better in French. I've seen it in French before, and to see Sid Caesar sound like a really, like a Quebec uh, pickup artist from Cruising Bar, that famous movie. That's a movie you should check out if you can find it in the States. But, ladies and gentlemen, again, I love my earthquake. I love my towering inferno. I, I, I love my Poseidon adventure. You know, it's tremendous. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing with our disaster movie reviews, let us know in a like, comment, subscribe, or share. Bye.